Hi, I'm Rabbi Dr. Nathan Slifkin, and I'm speaking to you from the Biblical Museum of Natural History, just facing the city of Bet Shemesh, in between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. At the Biblical Museum of Natural History, we have several different exhibit halls, all teaching about different aspects of the natural world of the Bible. So let's take a look at some of these halls, in particular, the Hall of Shofas. So here we are at the Rusak family Hall of Shofas <coughs> here at the Biblical Museum of Natural History, where we have many different horns and shofas from different animals, which bring to light different aspects of the uh, laws and the symbolism of the shofar. So let's go through these exhibits and see what we can learn. So let's start off with something like this. Sounds like a shofar, but it's not a shofar. It is a conch, a seashell. Makes the same sound as a shofar, but not acceptable for use as a shofar. How about this? Sounds a bit like a shofar, looks a lot like a shofar, but once again, not a shofar. This is a didgeridoo. Didgeridoo, native Aboriginal Australian instrument. And in Jewish law, this would not be acceptable for use as a shofar. Why? Because it's not from an animal. It's made of wood. Australia does not have any native animals with horns. So the native instrument is made from wood. So that's no good as a shofar, because a shofar has to be made from an animal horn. Now, how about making a shofar from a unicorn? So, be inclined to say, well, unicorns don't exist. But they're not just made up. The reason why people believe in unicorns is that you really do find unicorn horns, and you only ever find one of them. You never find them, uh, you never find a pair of them. So that's why people believe that there is a creature with a single white spiral horn in its forehead. But what does it actually come from? It is from a narwhal, a kind of whale whose front tooth, front left tooth grows out like this. But it's a tooth and not a horn, and therefore it cannot be made into a shofar. So a shofar needs to be made from an animal horn, but not every kind of horn can be made into a shofar. The horn of an elk or of a moose cannot be made into a shofar because it's solid bone, and it's just physically it cannot be made into a shofar. By the same token, the horn of a rhinoceros cannot be made into a shofar because it's solid. Right? A shofar has to be made from a hollow horn. A shofar is made from a horn like this, where the outside is keratin and inside is bone. And if you boil it, you can take out the bone, you're left with a hollow keratin tube, you saw off the end to make your mouthpiece, and that's how you make your shofar. So only hollow horns can be made into a shofar. So a shofar has to be made from a hollow horn. But not every kind of hollow horn can be made into a shofar. This beautiful shofar here is made from the horn of a cow. So functionally, it's a shofar. However, in Jewish law and tradition, this may not be used for the mitzvah, for the commandment of blowing shofar. And the reason has to do with negative symbolism of cows. It's the cow that was used in the sin of the golden calf. And the Talmud says, Ein kategor na sanegor. The prosecution cannot be used for the defense. Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, is a day of judgment. And cows are a witness for the prosecution because of the sin of the golden calf. Therefore, a shofar made for the cow should not be used on Rosh Hashanah. And by the same token, anything that's in the wider cow family, anything that's cowish, should also not be used as a shofar. So for example, if we take this magnificent African buffalo, so he has a magnificent horn, about to saw off the tip, this would be a really spectacular shofar, but because buffalo are in the cow family, it likewise should not be used. And the same goes for other members of the cow family, such as 
Asian water buffalo, and the American bison. All these are in the cow family and should not be used to make the chauffeur. Now, of all the exotic chauffeurs here at the Biblical Museum of Natural History, most of them are chauffeurs that we made specially and which it's impossible to purchase in the store. This is an exception. Chauffeurs like this can be purchased in stores. This comes from an Oryx, O-R-Y-X. That's a magnificent antelope up here. Long, straight horns. And in fact, the uh, horns of this animal are, are so symmetrical and straight that from a distance, it looks like it only has one horn. So this also contributed to the legend of the unicorn. Now, although these chauffeurs are sold, but traditionally it's not the kind of chauffeur that's used on Rosh Hashanah for the Jewish New Year. And the reason for that is that it's a chauffeur which is straight. Traditionally, the chauffeur for Rosh Hashanah is bent, and that symbolizes that with Rosh Hashanah being the days of awe, the day in which God is coronated as king, judging his creation, so we are supposed to be bent over in awe, you know, um, bending our will uh, before, the, before the king of kings. And by the same token, the chauffeur is supposed to symbolize that and also be bent. So according to Jewish law, a straight chauffeur should only be used if you do not have a bent alternative. Here's what this chauffeur sounds like. Now, the, the most common straight chauffeurs that you'll see in stores are from the Oryx antelope, also called a Hemsbok in South Africa. But there are other antelope also which have straight horns, such as this. This is from an eland, the uh, African eland, which is the largest antelope in the world, can weigh over a ton. It also has a horn, it's got a twist, but still basically straight along its length. So we've established that for Rosh Hashanah, the chauffeur should ideally be made from a bent horn. But with some animals, you have the opposite problem, that the horn is so bent that it's physically very difficult to turn it into a chauffeur. For example, let's take this wildebeest here. Now, if you look at the horns, you'll see they're very sharply bent, kind of, you know, into a, into a U. And that means that when you make it into a chauffeur, which means extracting the bone, it's extremely difficult to actually get the bone out because it has such a sharp turn. Now, similarly, you have the, uh, the hartebeest, right? An antelope with a very sharp turn, but this, but this one is still, it's very it's slightly less bent than the wildebeest, so it is possible to extract the bone with some difficulty and turn it into a chauffeur like this. But with the wildebeest, the turn, the bend in it is just a little bit too sharp and makes it impossible to extract the bone. So here we have bent curved chauffeurs from a number of different types of exotic antelope. None of these are commercially available. We had them made specially for the Biblical Museum of Natural History. The most spectacular one has to be this. This is from the sable antelope of Africa. Males are large, black, and have absolutely magnificent, sweeping, ridged horns like this. It's magnificent. And there's other types of antelope we have here too. Uh, this one, for example, this is from a water buck. And also the horns are ridged, not quite as big as the sable's horns, more of a light brown in color. And it's another example here. This is a, from a scimitar horned oryx. An oryx whose horns are not straight, but curved into a beautiful scimitar shape like this. Now, some antelope have horns that really grow into quite a spiral. For example, the uh, black buck from India. Its horn spirals into several different twists, produces a beautiful chauffeur like this. Uh, we have the uh, impala from South Africa, also uh, has a number of beautiful twists to the horn. But of all the spiral horn chauffeurs, the most famous by far is this one. 
Uh, this is, in fact, the, uh, the only exotic chauffeur which is very widely commercially available, although you won't normally see them this big. And this comes from a kudu. Kudu is a beautiful, beautiful antelope from South Africa. Absolutely magnificent, huge, spiral, twisted horns. Uh, and these are very widely available. And the reason why they're so widely available is that kudu are extremely numerous in Africa. Uh, and the reason for that is that they are exceptionally good at leaping. They can leap six feet straight up in the air. And therefore, the, uh, the wildlife in Africa is confined to game reserves. Right? Lions, leopards, creatures like that, they're not roaming all over Africa. They're in the game reserves. But the kudu are able to leap over the fences of the game reserves. So they spread over much wider areas, areas where they do not have predators, and therefore they breed unchecked. So for that reason, the kudu is a very common animal in Africa, and there are many horns of theirs available to produce beautiful chauffeurs like this. So the kudu chauffeur, being so spectacularly beautiful, has long been a, a favored chauffeur in many different communities to use. Here we have smaller chauffeurs, some of these smaller antelope. This is from a springbok from Africa. And this is a most unusual chauffeur. It comes from an animal called a pronghorn, an American antelope that you'll see in Wyoming, places like that. And pronghorn, here we go. Here's the uh, horn from the opposite side of the head. This one has not yet been made into a chauffeur. So you see it, it branches, it, it's forked, right? Pronged, hence the name pronghorn. Uh, so it's forked like the antlers of a deer. But whereas the antlers of a deer are made out of solid bone and are therefore completely unsuitable for turning into a chauffeur, a pronghorn's antlers are a keratin sheet surrounding a bony core. So the bony core can be removed and you're left with a hollow, hollow tube. You saw off the end to make a mouthpiece and once again you're able to make a chauffeur. Now, in terms of general questions, such as you know, how do you get the horns from the animal, there's a lot of confusion about that. Hollow horns like this, the animal does not shed them. The only horns which are shed are antlers from deer, which are, in any case, unsuitable for use as chauffeurs. Uh, these horns, the way, they're the way that chauffeurs are obtained from horns like this is that after the animal is died, right, then its horn is cut off the, uh, cut off the skull and turned into a chauffeur. Now these chauffeurs come from goats. Domestic goats have horns that are kind of uh, flattish, short, black, and this is a chauffeur from a, these are chauffeurs from domestic goats. But these spectacular, this spectacular chauffeur here, this comes from an ibex. Ibex is the beautiful wild mountain goat. And they have spectacular huge ridged horns, which make chauffeurs like these. And chauffeurs like these in temple times were used for Yeovil, for the Jubilee year. So we've seen chauffeurs from many different animals. However, in Jewish tradition and Jewish law, the best chauffeur to use is not the spectacular horn of a kudu or anything like that. The best chauffeur to use is one made from the horn of a ram of an adult male sheep. What's the reason for this? Well, it's the opposite of the cow. We're not allowed to use a chauffeur from a cow because that brings to mind a negative memory of the sin with the golden calf. Instead, we want to use the chauffeur made from the horn of a ram, which reminds God and us of a very positive memory in history, the incident with Abraham being, being told by God to sacrifice his son, and Abraham was willing to do so, and at the, at the last minute, God says, no, now I know that you're completely dedicated to listening to me. You know, you've passed the test and you don't need to actually sacrifice your son. Uh, but in place of that, Abraham lifts his eyes and he sees, which means a ram trapped by its horns in the thicket. Exactly like this. Here we have an extraordinary video of a jogger in Europe in a forest who came across a ram that was trapped by its horns in a thicket. 
exactly as the verse describes. Because rams have very sharply uh, twisted spiral horns, once they get it hooked around a branch, they're stuck. They can't get it off. You see what a difficult time this jogger is having trying to uh, free this ram. There was a very powerful animal to hit him at the wrong angle that could break his legs. So it's very difficult. The ram can't pull free because uh, the, the more it pulls, the more tightly it gets stuck. The only way to free the ram from the bush is to push it in the uh, opposite direction of where it wants to go to unhook the horn. And that's what he's trying to do. A very difficult, dangerous task. Suspense is killing me. And will he, won't he, will he, won't he? And there we go. He did it. So there you see the biblical verse coming to life. It actually happens. Rams getting trapped by their horns in a thicket exactly as happened with Abraham. Now, that, it's interesting, the particular type of ram in that video was a mouflon. You see, when you buy a chauffeur in his store from a ram's horn, a chauffeur like this, it comes from a regular domestic sheep too. But there's other sheep too, there's other sheep as well. You know, the ram in this video is a mouflon. A mouflon is a type of wild sheep that used to be indigenous to this area in the land of Israel, since extinct from the area and it produces an absolutely magnificent horn like this. Absolutely spectacular. This is a chauffeur made from a mouflon. Unfortunately, one of our visitors dropped it, it broke, we glued it together, it doesn't work anymore. But a magnificent chauffeur anyway. Now, there's other, there's other types of rams too. You'll never see a chauffeur like this for sale. This is from a Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, a small one, but still absolutely massive, powerful horn. If you were to get butted by a Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, it would cave in your skull like an eggshell. Right, so chauffeurs like this, you know, the horns are very rare, very difficult to get hold of. I was actually, uh, we were given this as a gift by an Orthodox Jewish big game hunter, and that is probably the rarest species I've ever encountered. Finally, we have this curious chauffeur. This is a chauffeur from pre-Holocaust Europe. Uh, any chauffeurs that survived from that place, from that era, they all look like this. They're kind of, they are very often black, they're flattened, they have an ornate carving at the bell end of the chauffeur. The reason for the carving is not clear, some kind of uh, decoration. But what's curious is that the majority of these chauffeurs seem to be made of goat's horns rather than ram's horns. Uh, and you, you can tell that firstly by the color, goat's horns tend to be black, but also by how in cross section, you know, they're very flat. It's a distinctive feature of goat's horns. So the question is, why were Jewish communities in pre-Holocaust Europe making chauffeurs from goats instead of from rams? So it, it's a bit of a riddle. I don't know the answer. Perhaps it's just a question of availability. Now, there's not many uh, adult male sheep available because male sheep are often uh, uh, killed, slaughtered at a very young age uh, for lamb chops. Where, so it appears perhaps it's just a question of availability that there were more goat's horns available to make chauffeurs with. Now another interesting question is whether one can make a chauffeur from an animal that is not kosher. In general, holy items which are made from animals have to be made from kosher animals. A Torah scroll made from written on parchment, that parchment can only come from the skin of a kosher animal. But a shofar, the question is how holy is a shofar? Unlike with a Torah scroll, which may not be put on the floor, or certainly not disposed of in the garbage, a shofar does not have that same level of sanctity. A shofar can be placed on the floor. A shofar can be discarded in the garbage. But on the other hand, it is used for a commandment, for a mitzvah. So must a chauffeur be made from the horn of a kosher animal or not? Can you make a chauffeur from the horn of a non-kosher animal? The interesting answer is that the question is entirely academic because there are no non-kosher animals which have hollow horns. Every animal with a hollow horn that is physically suitable for making into a chauffeur 
is an animal that has split hooves and which brings up the cud, which is kosher. There simply are no non-kosher animals which, which have horns that could even be physically made into a shofar. So the question is, is, is only academic. So we've had a tour of the world of shofars, from the horns that are least acceptable for use as shofars to the best horns that are suitable for shofars. This is the uh, Hall of Shofas here at the Biblical Museum of Natural History. We have many other different exhibit halls bringing to light different aspects of the natural world of the Bible. I hope that you're able to come and visit us here in person.